Oh, that is just next level. The volume on this is insane. A few months ago, I started digging into MHD drives or magneto hydrodynamic thrust. It's a super exotic type of thrust that uses no moving parts and is straight out of science fiction. Better yet, producing it is incredibly easy. Like many videos on YouTube show, all that's needed are two electrodes, a magnet, and some salt water, plus electricity. For the sake of categories, I call these unidimensional thrusters. So, after physically testing numerous variables, I designed what I consider a two-dimensional thruster. It showed some potential with speeds in excess of 35 centimeters a second. Like many first prototypes, the design showed some promise, but had plenty of room for improvement. From the magnets and electrodes to the geometry and repairability, it could all improve. After considerable redesign, printing, and testing, I found a solution in the form of what I like to call a three-dimensional BRM thruster. This video is sponsored by Novium. Okay, so MHD thrust can be used to move water, plasma, or any conductive fluid. However, I'm most interested in its use for marine transportation. Now, we've had propellers since the beginning of time, so what's the point? Well, both gasoline-powered boats and diesel ships emit tremendous amounts of noise pollution into the ocean, which can have detrimental effects on marine life. They don't like that. While they're not perfect, MHD drives might offer a quieter alternative. They also don't have any moving parts, which is just cool. Taking a look at my first MHD thruster, a few design improvements come to mind. For starters, these magnets are metal, meaning they conduct electricity. So when this is submerged underwater, they act as kind of a partial short circuit between the electrodes, robbing power out of the system. This isn't fully submerged, but you get the idea. Next, the magnetic fields on the top and the bottom are fully exposed. This is a big inefficiency because while the main output goes backwards, this exposure causes a counter current to flow forward. The nozzle I designed is far too constrictive, it slows output, the electrodes are easily corroded, and lastly, the magnets I used are not the most powerful grade of neodymium. Ease of repair and assembly were also super high on my list as well. So after a copious hours staring into space, I realized a radial design might be the way to go. So I got to work designing a thruster that solved all these issues. Looking for magnets similar in dimension to what I used last time, I dug a little deeper and found identical sizes but stronger in pole. While the old ones were N42, these were N45. I ordered 16 and quietly cried. I then hopped onto onlinemetals.com and looked for an outer electrode and inner electrode both made of 316 stainless steel. With supplies ordered, I sat down for a super intensive 3D modeling session. After two days, I reached the design which held magnets between two circular electrodes in a radial fashion. The magnets could be waterproofed and then slid into these separate compartments. With the hardest part behind me, I hit print and prepared for one hell of a wait. Removing the supports on this print was about as fun as a first date. You know what I'm talking about. I do love how it came out though. Shortly afterwards, both my stainless steel pipes arrived as well as the most magnetic box in the world containing my 16 neodymium magnets. Absolute powerhouses of strength. Turns out these pipes weren't cut to spec, so a quick sanding fixed that. To ensure these magnets don't conduct electricity while underwater, I laid them out individually a bit like a ceremonial sacrifice and gave them the one-two flex seal treatment. No, that's a lot of damage! After those dried, I had everything needed to assemble the thruster. The beauty of this design lies in just how simple it is to assemble or disassemble for repairs. The inner electrode slides into place, as does the outer electrode. It's that simple. That looks really good. Let's test it. Before initial tests, here was the intention behind my design. The inner tube is the positive electrode and the outer tube the negative. So the electric field will radiate outward from the center. The magnets are all positioned to produce a magnetic field perpendicular to this electric field and the entire magnetic field is being utilized. We'll see if it works as intended. I didn't do many calculations. I just went off principles I learned from the first thruster. After printing a custom stand and mixing 15 gallons or so of salt water, it was good to go. All right, let's start with 10 volts. Curious, <laughs> yes, it works. It's pretty slow, but it, it works. 
I repeated this test three times and found average velocity of 17 centimeters a second. This is 15 volts? Yeah, 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 faster velocity. <laughs> so cool. Wow. With another triplicate test, average velocity was now 20 centimeters a second. Let's hit 20 volts. And, oh, look at that column of water. You can definitely see that column of water moving. Faster velocity still. This time, the average output was 28.5 per second. And 25 volts. Ah, oh, that's a massive increase in output. Definitely the fastest output so far, but uh, it's still not as fast as I'd like. And with the final triplicate test, velocity averaged 37 centimeters a second. As you can clearly see, this is a positive correlation. <sighs> the thruster clearly worked, though not quite as well as I would have hoped. So after some additional thinking, I realized this design already had room for improvement, namely hydrodynamics. The front and back are just flat. This slows down the intake of water and produces eddy currents behind the supports, visible right here, which increases drag. So I sat down for an intense redesign of this thruster using Onshape. For starters, I added a trailing taper to decrease drag on the output, as well as a removable central insert. Then I flipped it around and molded a hydrodynamic front end. This is the design program I've used for all of my 3D printing projects because it's really simple and designed to be used by pretty much anybody. I've grown quite fond of it, and I'll leave a link in the description down below so you can try it for free. Shooting the design over to my Prusa, it got to work bringing this final design to life. Well, that's going to be printing forever, just like every single one of these attempts took. <laughs> now, if you've followed my channel for a while, you might have noticed that my builds are usually very clean and precise because, quite frankly, I have a preference for a product that completely looks the part. So that's why for this video sponsor, I've partnered with Novium. They create unique and innovative high-end products like their levitating hover pens with the goal to inspire creativity and curiosity, not unlike the goal of my channel. So this guy is their interstellar hover pen. It's a space-inspired design, tilts at 23.5 degrees as a tribute to the Earth's axis, and comes with the option to embed a piece of meteorite in the handle. Look, I love meteorites and have a huge collection. That's just cool. It also comes in various colors, such as Mars Magma and Neptune Blue, as well as 18 karat gold plated. They also have their future edition hover pen, which is a two-in-one fountain slash rollerball pen and tilts nearly sideways. These things are the perfect combination of art and space, and I'll be honest, they provide an incredible writing and drawing experience. So it's really no shocker they won Time Magazine's award for best inventions in 2022. This makes them an awesome gift for anybody who loves science. You can find these at noviumdesign.com and I'll leave links in the description down below. Definitely go check them out and use code PLASMA for 10% off plus free shipping worldwide. Awesome designs. And speaking of designs, let's fast forward to my print being done. Oh, it took a staggering 51 hours to print, but the results were worth the wait. After drilling a few placement holes in the inner tube, each of 12 magnets were slid into place, then the outer casing and inner casing. Bolting the tubes in place provided stability, but also an electrical connection for the positive. To top it off, I inserted the exhaust cone, which locks right in. Okay, the rebuild's complete, and a lot of work went into this, so let's give it some power and see what it's capable of. Here goes, 15 volts. Whoa, oh, that's definitely better. That's a lot better. While this view is great for measuring velocity, an end-on view provides an amazing window into electrolytic gas production, and it's crazy how fast it occurs. Velocity-wise, this redesign now pushes 28 centimeters a second. Here's 25. Oh, that is just next level. <laughs> the volume on this is insane. Adding dye to the input really helped to visualize the flow through on this thruster. You can clearly see the input is laminar and the output turbulent, which is really cool. And it's quite clear the trailing tapers I added were doing their job of focusing the thrust. All in, with 25 volts on this redesign, velocity now averaged 47 centimeters a second. Well, that's a problem. So the radial topography used here clearly shows some promise. I'm really excited about it. I'm pretty happy with the results as well. Let's contrast this design against its predecessor. 
The first design produced an exhaust velocity of 35 centimeters a second, resulting in a flow rate of 250 mils per second and requiring 12 amps at 25 volts. The BRM thruster produced an exhaust velocity near 50 centimeters per second, resulting in a flow rate of 3,650 mils per second and requiring 30 amps at 25 volts. Different performances, but they rely on identical science. Essentially, this thruster is a solid-state turbine that relies on the principles of magnetohydrodynamic thrust. That's a type of thrust that uses no moving parts, but does rely on a sibling rivalry, so to speak, between magnetic fields and electric fields. I touched on this relationship in my first marine thruster video. When a magnetic field interacts with an electric field that is oriented perpendicularly, the electric charge carriers experience a force in the z-direction. That is called a Lorentz force. And in this case, what are the charge carriers? The electrified water. As you can recall from earlier, this design creates a perpendicular alignment between electric and magnetic fields. Material-wise, I chose 316 stainless steel tubing because it's super resistant to corrosion, but it will eventually corrode away from electrolysis. So to repair the thruster, it's as easy as slipping off either tube and replacing with new. While this thruster may not have the output comparable to a propeller, it does come with an advantage. It's more silent to operate both above and below water, and involves zero moving parts. You know, it might be interesting to build a boat using a couple of these thrusters. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe to see what I work on next. Over the years, I've shot videos covering everything from Tesla coils, plasma tables, and ionic thrusters, to atmospheric electricity, nuclear fusion, and levitation. Building and documenting innovative ideas is a huge passion of mine. It is a huge honor being able to produce these videos, and thank you very much for watching. You stay classy.